I don't even know how to describe what I'm feeling. Just awe. I'm not really a truck guy or ever have been a car guy or anything. So it's not like I ever went on YouTube and looked stuff up or anything. And the only reason I kind of become a truck guy is because I've had to do so much fucking work online. But I just saw my first whistling diesel video. And oh my god. I mean, extreme opposite ends. What those trucks go through. And the one they were just shoving shit into the turbo, and it just kept going. And it's a Duramax. It's, it's chilly here today, but it's not cold. It's like 30. And I ran an errand earlier. I had it plugged in. I let it idle for about 10 minutes. And even after that, I didn't even go like above 1500 RPM. I mean, I had just baby the shit out of it. And didn't even drive it like normal until, you know, it got up to like 180 degrees. That's how I treat most of my equipment. But the fucking thing just keeps breaking down. And he's shoving a lug nut into the turbo. And it just keeps fucking going. Meanwhile, my new steering gear just came in because I'm leaking power steering fluid all over the fucking place. And my starter's going out. What the fuck? <laughs> it's just mind blowing. Yeah, to the, to the gentleman that commented on this, yeah, it needs to be dressed. That was actually the first time I've ever used this. So my father was a mechanic and takes an immense amount of pride in what he does and his tools and everything. Every, every wrench, every everything gets wiped down when the job's done before it gets put in the toolbox. My grandfather was a mechanic, kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum. You, know, you look in his toolbox and it's like... But uh, when I moved out, my dad said, you know, I just take whatever I want out of my grandfather's toolbox. I mean, my dad doesn't need anything in it. And this was one of the things I grabbed, and I think that kind of uh, just personifies how he took mechanicking. But did get some good stuff. The only thing is, he was forward, so everything's standard, and of course, the Max is better. Got these swivels. They're Max, they're nice. And these ones. But then you, you also come across things like this, and it's a you know, craftsman set, which a real professional mechanic I don't think would use. And things like this. Got that from his toolbox. It's a hodgepodge all over the place. Blackhawk, I don't even know what the fuck Blackhawk is. Mac, you just never know. Anyway, I uh, actually, just about 10 minutes ago, spoke to uh, Matt Olson. Yeah, Matthew Olson. And I'm gonna be ordering a set of his uh, saw tools. Not pretend mechanic my way around getting bearings and case halves on. But in the meantime, I'm kind of brain thinking It'll take a few days for those things to get here, I'm sure. I have a nice press right here. It's like everything I'm gonna do, I need the workbench now. I feel like moving the saw and so an idea. Now that I'm pretty much ready to go, I mean, crankshaft has been in the freezer since yesterday. I think I'm just gonna wait. You know, I'm, I'm buying new tools, and I don't know when the next time I'm gonna need to split the cases, so I at least wanna use them. 372 can wait. It's not going anywhere. Yay. Thrive. 
started on this. It was been doing that since I modded it, and so I assumed it was something to do with the mod. But at the same time, as when I popped that language off the first time, and just playing with it, the fucking stupidest linkage ever. Don't fucking look at it too hard now. Come on, don't jinx me. Hot enough fire, anything will burn. And I am so over. I'm just at that don't care point. So fucking tired of winter time. I just want to freaking climb and nice out, soupy and wet. And I have no idea how much wood I've gone through already this year, but every day a freaking heaped wheelbarrow. However many days I've been using the stove, a couple months now, a heaped wheelbarrow every day. It'll be nice in the spring. I'm gonna do some big oak or something. I was gonna grab it, like everything, build a firewood shelter, split it all, and then we'll be all good for next year. I'm gonna have to build a really freaking big lean-to or something. Though I mean, that's gonna have to be a lot of wood. Like I said, I don't know how much I've gone through this year, but it's gonna be a freaking lot. I didn't film any of the construction. After my friend Diane saw these kitty bunk beds, she asked if I could make something for her grooming business. Diane's one of those people I can't say no to. I won't say her and Jeff are boyfriend and girlfriend, because they'll probably both beat the crap out of me, but they live together, so. And also she's this awesome person. Oftentimes people come up in the middle of the night, just leave random animals at the door to her shop. She always takes them in and makes sure they're healthy and finds homes for them. A couple years ago, Somebody left, you know, in the middle of the night, this like brand new kitten, not even a month old, and it had a broken jaw for like a month and a half. She hand bottle fed that thing until it got healthy. And that kitten turned out to be Gibbs. It's like his favorite thing ever, having his left ear rubbed with facial hair. So I'll include that footage in this video as well because it doesn't really need its own video. For up to him. We'd be doing this like for hours. Thank you, Key. She said, Yeah, let me yawn for you. <laughs> Got here to install them earlier and didn't at all come prepared for metal studs. So this will be interesting. I'll just get back from the hardware store when we picked up some stuff. These guys are on a bender. <laughs> Just rolling around in it. <laughs> He's covered in it. Hey, yeah, I'm right there.
Have a good one, humans.